Hey guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about Rail 7.2's new browser guard, but before we do that, this episode is sponsored by Tuple. We've been using Tuple for the last five years. Couldn't live without it, frankly, for screen sharing, for collaborating on code, um, and just for regular meetings, honestly. Uh, we use Tuple for just about everything as a remote team. Um, and I'm going to jump in Tuple here into the pairing lounge. And Colin here is going to join us in this episode talking about uh, the new browser version guard. What's up, Colin? All right, man. What's happening with you? What you up to? <laughs> oh, you know, just recording a screencast. Yeah. Nice. So you and I have some familiarity with this uh, new browser version guard feature in Rails 7. Oh, yes, we um, do. This was... I think it was kind of um, pushed a lot because of the no build steps in that the Rails seven two has been pushing. David's been pushing this a lot of um, basically browsers, at least very modern recent versions of browsers uh, support tons of awesome stuff um, mm -hmm. like CSS nesting and the has selector and stuff like that. Import maps, uh, web P images, web push badges, uh, lots of cool things that don't require, um, you know, extra stuff anymore. And uh, in order to kind of embrace that, Rails is adding this new allow browser versions modern uh, by default, which is going to select all the browser versions that support those things. Um, but you can customize this. Uh, and we actually ran into this because... When we were upgrading Go Rails to Rails 7.2's beta uh, one, the first beta, mm -hmm. uh, we were like, you know what? Let's try it on Go Rails and see what happens. Well, uh, this is going to then check those browser versions, and if it doesn't pass, it's going to render this uh, public 406 unsupported browser template. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Rails app update command did not include that in the upgrade. Uh, mm -hmm. So I actually patched Rails to fix that, and I think that got released in beta two. Um, so if you app update, you'll be safe now, um, which is good. But this is a feature that um, is pretty cool, uh, but also something that you're almost certainly not going to want to use versions modern unless you know that you need these features. Um, yeah. What are you? Where are you looking at that on right now? Let's uh, let me see that. Oh uh, yeah. Let me share my screen. I will share this display. I've got three monitors here. So calling. Oh, uh, yeah. And the guides here. See, cool. See Chrome here now. Mm hmm. So, yeah, this is what we uh, will get by default in all new Rails applications, the versions modern um, limiter here. But you can customize the versions to specific browsers. Um, and you also can turn this off. If you're upgrading a Rails application, it's not going to insert this into your application controller, so don't worry about that on the upgrade. You'd have to manually opt into this, um, mm -hmm. but it is something important to know. So, um, this is actually pretty great. Uh, it does, in fact, in the API docs mention Safari 17.2 uh, and up, Chrome 120 and up, Firefox 121 and up. Opera 106 and up. Um, mm. It's impossible to keep track of how many <laughs> releases yeah, these browsers like, have to do anymore. Um, yeah. You know what? I I like this actually. I don't know if I if I noticed that before until now though that you can you know specify only certain actions. You know. Uh, so speaking of that, what um, is really cool to look at the source code for this? Like usually when a new feature like this comes out, I like to go see how it was implemented. Because it is a nice DSL, allow mm -hmm. browser versions done. Mm -hmm. yep. um, but the interface for this is actually more than what, it doc what is documented. So all you see is versions and then only show. And you're like, huh, there must be some other options that we can pass in here. Well, mm -hmm. versions is one thing. Then there's a block that determines um, how it is rendered, uh, so the block is given a lambda, which will then, hey, if it is not an allowed version, let's render that file that um, is in your public 
directory, Rails root mm -hmm. join public 406 unsupported browser. Uh, so you want to make sure you have this if this file if you're upgrading a Rails app, um, which should be fine now with the app update command. But yep. the rest of the options are just given to this. It's a before action. Normal before Boom. action. Yep. Isn't that cool? It's amazing. And then yeah. what's really neat is that so this is interesting, right? So you've got this allow browser here, but then you also have allow browser here, which is like, yep. how do we have the same method name? Mm -hmm. um, but you have this defined as a class method. Uh, so this is what you are defining in your controller. That's this class method. Yep. But then this is calling the private method allow browser, uh, which has almost the same arguments versions in block, but it doesn't take uh, any of the other options because those were for your before action. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't actually even need necessarily to be written like this, except it would be hard to build your own before action with options like this block. Um, so it's a great little interface they built. And then that's all it does is basically use the user agent browser blocker class, which is defined here. Uh, and checks to see if the browser is blocked. And if it is, it uh, uses the active support notifications in order to uh, just track that, that it happened, uh, mm -hmm. and instrument that, and then it evaluates the block and says, hey, where we're currently at, let's run the block, which means call this render file. But you can customize that if you want to pass in your own proc and render your own template or anything that you might want to render. You might want to do a turbo yeah, stream or whatever cool. the heck. You could do anything you want there. Um, but that is all, of course, completely undocumented unless you poke at the source code. So I, yeah, that's, that's the cool. stuff that I love to to learn. Yep. And then browser blocker itself is just super simple. There may eventually be some other sets. I see they've planned for that. Like they didn't have to, you know, do other ones, but the they've they've made it ready for that. So there may be you know, because right now this is blocking for everything that supports WebP, Web Push, badges, import maps, CSS nesting, and CSS has. There yep. could be one just as import maps. And it could right. just be like, here's all the browser versions that support import maps. And if that's the only thing you care about, here's your shortcut. Mm -hmm. And I guess you could register your own in here too if you wanted. Um, yeah, that's super cool. Because you could assign because this constant should be modifiable. It wouldn't yep. be, it probably isn't frozen. So you could insert your own um, as an initializer or something. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Nothing fancy. Uh, the user agent gem, I'm pretty sure is um, pretty old. Wonder who uh, Joshua Peak? Yeah, this is from two thousand nine. Wow, um, it hasn't gotten surprisingly. You know, you would expect if Rails is going to grab a gem like that, you would expect it to have a release since twenty eighteen. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if it'll end up being that this starts getting contributions again or whatever it is, or you know, if it doesn't, then maybe they end up with. Um, who knows? It, it may not be anything that really needs to change at this point too much. Sure. Um, but it's possible, it, you know, ends up having to be replaced or whatever updated at some point. If, if mm -hmm. people find bugs now it'll be under extra amount of scrutiny being built into right. to rails, but yeah. pretty awesome. Um, and then can I use, this is also super important. So if you want to see and build your own, um, if you want to build your own uh, set of versions, then yep. you want to come in here and say like, okay, if we did want to do that import map one, then we could go back to Chrome 89, Edge 89, Safari 16.4. Um, sadly, no Internet Explorer. Poor, poor guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, throw a false in for that one yeah um but you know uh i think this is going to be an important tool for anybody building applications that are no build like it's cool to have this built in 
this browser blocker stuff um, probably could be used for other things, other purposes too. You could reach for this class um, sure. if you wanted. When a class is inside the private, it doesn't actually mean it's private, right? You can still access that. Like, a, I don't think classes can be marked as private in Ruby. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yep. they can in some other languages. So right. it just happens to be defined down here. It's not that it is actually uh, private or whatever. But yeah, dude, um, great little really feature, feature, I think. Uh, I really like the implementation and, you know, it's it's one of those things that's pretty well documented, at least for the 99% use case. And anybody trying to render custom stuff, just a quick peek at the source code right here, that argument is going to be obvious enough to you mm -hmm. hopefully that oh i just give it a different block argument and yep. i can render and i can render whatever i want yeah yep. uh another cool example of using instance exec as well just here's your block yep. transport it and use it in this context instead uh always like that stuff we've been using that a lot in like noticed and whatever else for configuration um mm -hmm. So yeah. Anything else uh, with this one? No, it's, it's amazing how like small and simple it is, you know. But really, how powerful and flexible it is already, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, I I like how it does a lot, but it's that small, you know. Yeah, I really, I really just love how it wraps like the before action, so you can just continue to do your. Kind yep. of, you know, familiar stuff here. And it's a good example of like, you know, I was, this is interesting. It just gave me an idea of like, we could use this for, so one of the annoyances I've always had with device was like before action authenticate user, right? Oh, right. So what if instead you had authenticate user and then it could have options that define oh, sure. the before action because the trouble that I have with it is that authenticate user will always authenticate you to the login screen. But sometimes I know you're coming from a sales page and probably you don't already have an account and I want to send you to sign up and sign not uh -huh. authentic, uh, not log in. Mm -hmm. um, Ooh, that's really interesting. And we could totally do that by using that same approach where you could just say authenticate user and then give it an option because a before action cannot be, it just gets a symbol and mm -hmm. gets to call a method and you can't give it options, but this allows you to do that, which is yeah. uh, a cool approach. So that's a really good idea. Actually, that could be a future episode and a feature in uh, a revise right. auth gem. Yeah. Or that. So yeah. I, I was already working on that this morning or thinking yeah. about this this morning. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. um, very yeah. fresh on my mind, which is good. Nice. So, all right, man. Well, uh, cool. yeah. Thanks for I calling enjoyed it. Here. Yeah, it was a great call. Um, I want to say if anybody wants to use Tuple, we highly, highly recommend it. Use it every day, pretty much. Um, mm -hmm. And they're giving, uh, if you use the code GORAILS at checkout, you can get 50% off for your first three months to try it out. We'll show off some more of the awesome features, but the one we're using today is the pairing lounge. So you have these rooms that people can just be hanging out in. Uh, and so Colin was hanging out saying, if anybody wants to pair, I am sitting here ready to go. So I can just click on it and boom, we're in a call. Could be multiple people in there, uh, yeah. you know, just hanging out and, and wanting to, to collaborate. Cause that's part of the trouble of working remotely is, you know, we don't get to hang out in person and sit at the same computer and share the Absolutely. same keyboard. Right. Yeah. But this brings us a lot closer to that. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Uh, it's been great. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Tuple, cool. for sponsoring this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. And we will talk to you in the next one. Peace. Later.